Um, good evening, everybody. I'm going to jump in front of Sarah and give her a moment to uh, gather herself. She, she had to run in. Um, my name's Ron Daniels. I'm an attorney in middle Georgia. Uh, I have a very general practice, but sort of relevant to our topic tonight. Uh, I actually represent the Division of Child Support Services in two different judicial circuits, uh, establishing and enforcing child support orders. Uh, and so I deal with child support issues a lot. Um, I, because of that, I don't do a whole lot of family law outside of that, but uh, I am familiar with the issues arising out of spousal support and alimony, but um, more significantly, child support. My turn. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all, can you hear me? I don't need the microphone, but I use it anyway. My name is Sarah Steele. Um, I am the only open out and practicing BDSM and polyamory specializing attorney in the country. What does that mean? That means that I do a lot of a lot of different things for a lot of different people. But the primary focus of my law firm for the last 10 years has been um, family law, criminal law, and a little bit of estate planning, mostly family law. I know all about the alimony. I know all about the child support. And I know about how I disagree with the uh, description of this class. And I can talk about that if you like. Um, I recently, as in I start Tuesday, have started a job as the assistant judicial public defender in Douglas County here in Georgia. So I will still be doing other stuff, but then I'll be working and helping kids get out of trouble because they're already in trouble, but hopefully enrich their lives so they don't see me again. So there you go. That's what I do. So I know a little bit about Elman and Child Support. A whole lot. A whole lot. So what you got? What Are we doing questions and answers? God, are we supposed to talk? I don't know. What are we doing? You know me. I can talk for five hours. So you well, might want right. to throttle me back, babe. <laughs> Do I, uh, do I need to start from the beginning? Um, so I, you know, I've noticed in the old lunch rent, I guess I should. Can everybody hear Scott? Yep. They can't on the video, though, so he's, uh, he's got to get their microphone. I don't know. There's, is this being broadcast? Well, that's cool. Okay. Reported. That would explain the camera right there. Yeah, I've noticed the online trend about uh, men's rights and, and manosphere type topics. And, you know, is that real? Is it not real? I'm seeing that online. And also there's a conversation about dating apps and how dating apps have changed dating and how they've wrecked it in some ways. And uh, you kind of put uh, family law and dating apps together. Um, and you get a mess. <laughs> and you, get a big, you get a big mess. And, um, and, and at the same time, things are, a lot of things are changing. Like Florida has changed their, their uh, Florida's eliminated alimony. Uh, and Tennessee made a change that uh, any child born out of uh, wedlock, you now have to have a, a DNA test. Um, so I'm down with that. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> so some things that, that look like they would never change before uh, are starting to change. So the question is kind of where is all this going? Oh, there's actually a disclaimer that we both have to give, yeah. but I'm going to give it on my behalf. Um, I am an attorney licensed to practice in the state of Georgia. I have practiced in... Oh, probably about eight or nine other states, um, but that's on a pro hoc vice basis. I am not licensed there. It's on a case by case basis. Also, anything that we talk about, can I say we? Are you okay with there that? Because you, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm about to say. No, yeah. yeah. Anything that uh, attorney and I are about to say um, does not constitute legal advice, does not create attorney client confidentiality. Um, Battery is not included, no extended warranty or assembly required. So there you go. In other words, this is not an attorney client relationship that you're establishing. And I'm sure um, he or I, either, I, I assume your pronouns, I apologize, your pronouns? Yeah, yeah, I'm he, him, she, her. Um, we'll be more than glad to talk to you about this maybe afterwards. I have another panel in a couple hours after this, and I'm alone because my fiance would go take our kid to Lawrenceville. Um, but uh, yeah, so don't think that this is like, hi, I suddenly have an attorney. I've actually taught classes internationally, and um, I have had more than a few people say, oh, I talked to Lady Steele. That's my name in the other communities. Oh, I've talked to Lady Steele, therefore I have a lawyer. No, that's not how that works. You, you have a lawyer when you pay me. And that's iffy. So there you go. Now, sorry, Scott, we have to say that. So preserve our bar okay. cards. Or we can't come back next year. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I, I'm kind of back where I started. So yes. what has this done? You know, dating apps and other things. What has this done to family law? What about these changes that we're seeing, like in Florida, like in Tennessee? I'm going to uh, let you go first. Okay. And then I'll well, and I, I've got so we're something. We're not stepping all over. Yeah. And, I, and I've got something sort of related to the changes with child support and, and really what's sort of coming in the future. Um, so I, I, my minor relation with child support is through what we call an, a, a federal agency, essentially. It's IV4 or IV, uh, 4D is what we call it, but it's IVD uh, when you see a written uh, agency. And there's federal funds that get 
uh, dispersed each state for certain milestones they do with child support. What you're seeing in terms of the trends of studies, and I don't know who do, does these studies, they make a lot of sense to me when they start talking about them, is that the movement across the country is to setting child support as an amount that a person agrees they can pay, more so than coming up with a formula like we have in Georgia now where it's, it's an Excel worksheet, uh, you don't really get to see the math get done. You pull in some numbers. You can kind of figure out what's going on if you know Excel pretty well, uh, but it spits out a number, and if both people make minimum wage, it's 264 per kid uh, if there's no other reason to deviate. Um, and the studies are saying that's not a good system, um, that people are more likely to pay child support if it is based on some figure they actually can pay. Uh, comparative to their income. Uh, the other big issue that we're seeing that's changing, it's not really related to dating apps, but it, it, it is in a way uh, related to social media, is a lot of people just do not work nine to five jobs anymore, the, the gig economy. Um, a lot of folks are 1099 contractors, uh, or they may be uh, freelance individuals who don't file their taxes. Uh, and that makes it somewhat difficult to determine a child support obligation when you don't have those records and so uh, a, a lot of focus has been in recent years of trying to look at non-traditional ways of figuring what somebody's income is by looking at for instance their ex profile and to see what they're doing or looking at their Facebook or if they have uh, you know a pressure washing business uh, and you see them washing people's houses for 200 bucks a pop uh, you can figure out they have some sort of income. Uh, and so and they talk about, woo, I had a busy day yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> or they uh, check into each place. My, my favorite story is a guy that was a DJ uh, that uh, fan bladed out about $3,000 but said he, he couldn't pay any child support. Uh, and that's why he was behind. And uh, strangely enough, he got ordered to pay $3,000 three days after he posted that picture. Was, you know, sort of a coincidence. Um, but in terms of child support changing, that that's – what we're looking at just sort of across the board. How is it going to uh, trickle down to 50 states? It's, it's going to be a hodgepodge. Um, the, in terms of dating apps and how they've impacted all of this, well, it, with child support, the issue that you always run into is identifying who the father is. It's generally pretty easy to identify who the mother is um, for obvious reasons. Uh, but identifying the father can sometimes be difficult because, uh, you know, one night stands happen um, and you, you may not keep up with that person. And, and so then you have to run back and try to figure all that out. Uh, with dating apps, it, it becomes increasingly difficult, too, because if you delete your profile on the dating app, then there goes the record of the person that you had. If you didn't get information beyond their username or who they said they were on a dating app, how are you ever going to find them? Uh, and so that that's a whole different issue, but I don't, I don't know if you've encountered that with spousal support oh boy, and alimony, but uh, <laughs> with child support, it does become a problem. Um, early on in my career, I worked for Tanya Mitchell Graham, who is known as the Gold Digger Killer. Um, she represented sports figures and music figures, some of whom, if I name names, you would know exactly who they are. And um, yeah, you learn real quick where to find stuff and where to find where the money's hitting. Musicians are the worst. Um, and I want to, I'm going to try if I can remember, I don't have a pen and paper to write all this down. I'm going to try to go back to the beginning of what you said. Um, yes, you work on the federal side of it. Um, I'm boots on the ground in Georgia, mostly side, but I've also handled um, child support cases in Texas. In Texas, child support is calculated by a percentage. And it's a pro rata percentage by who is making what money at the time. Um, and that's kind of like Georgia, but they, in Georgia, we can take into consideration a low-income deviation. So if you had a really good year last year and they're trying to base your income on tax, uh, tax returns from last year or even your check stubs over the last three months and you get fired, laid off, whatever the case may be, or you're a freelancer and I've run my own firm for 10 years, boy, do I know about feast and famine. Um, you know, sometimes that's fair, sometimes that's not. That's why if we have freelancers or people who own their own businesses or people that have occasional income from music videos or whatever the case may be, we try to do an average over a certain period of time. Um, 
But in Texas, I mean, they're just straight percentages. Here, you've got percentages, and then they take into, into account um, child care costs, um, especially if it has to do with work, not if you want to go out on a date. Um, again, low-income deviation. Does your child have special needs, and one party is paying for uh, therapy, things of that nature? Um, there's a lot of different, a lot of different deviations that you can get in Georgia, which to me, and I know Georgia has asked backwards on a lot of things, um, but they really got it right in child support as far as I'm concerned, because not only do they take income into consideration, but if, oops, I quit my job, I want a child support modification. Cool, what'd you make before that? What's your potential income? Um, how long have you been looking for a job? Are you collecting unemployment? Do you have other income or family and friends helping you, et cetera? Judges don't, they don't piddle, part, piddle fart around about this. They really don't, um, especially in the, the larger metro Atlanta counties. But they will take all that in consideration. And if nothing else, they will impute minimum wage. Um, you know, 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, etc. So I like the system that Georgia has. And as far as the feds are concerned, you know, wanting to change the laws, well, as we all know, the feds can change it, which affects all the states. Or they can say, here's this as an option, then every individual state has to adopt. So may the force be with you on that. God, what else did you say I wanted to talk about? Oh, well, no. you brought up Texas. I, I love oh, Texas yeah. as an example because mm -hmm. one of the things Texas does that we don't do here is charge interest on child support arrears. Yeah, they do. Um, and, and they do not like modifications in Texas. Not even like. Have, that's what They're I They're like, found. once it's done, it's <laughs> done. And see, I like modifications because what if you become disabled? What if you get a better paying job? You were in college when you had the child and you were together with the partner, and then you end up graduating and you get further degrees and further promotions and everything. It doesn't really happen in this generation, but it's been known to happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, what if you um, go from owning your own business to 10 years to going working for Douglas County? You know, it's, it's a difference. And so uh, modifications in Georgia are allowed any time after the original judgment and decree um, for the first two years, and then after that you have to show that it's in the best interest of the child or that there has been a significant change. Um, in income or circumstances like what happens if your child gets into god forbid an accident or something then they become disabled and your expenses go up through the ceiling you know you might need you know contribution from the other party if they're not already doing it so you got a lot of different options in georgia which is what i like about it and i also find oh the um whole what you can pay um i don't trust people <laughs> I'm a lawyer have been for 10 years well 12 years actually um i don't trust people to honestly dis, uh, report their income. I mean, if you're going to do that, just do a domestic relations financial affidavit, which every child support case requires, and every alimony case requires, which tells your incomings, your outgoings, and now you have to produce six months of bank statements. And if not bank statements, how old is your car? When did you buy it? Did you buy a $30,000 car cash last year, but you say you ain't got no money in the bank? Really? Y'all, Al Capone went to jail, not for prostitution, money laundering, anything else. He went for tax evasion. And if you don't think you can't be gotten, or if you're asking for a friend, you know, whatever, um, it'll happen. So, yeah, those the tax evading people, those are my favorites, too. And what did you find? See, I'm going to have to get out my phone so I can make notes. And what was the last thing you said? I don't forgot. See that? That's what was happens it, when you're a lawyer. Da dating apps. Oh, the dating yeah. app stuff. Okay. In my experience... Dating apps do not really come into play, or Facebook, or FetLife, or whatever you're on, Instagram, WhatsApp, Elemental P Chat. I don't know. I'm old. I, I'm not. I'm not even on TikTok. Get that. It's like it's like my hill. I'm dying on at this point. Like really. I'm on TikTok. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that cool. Um, so I have used the dating apps to find out if people were committing adultery. Um, because then you don't get more child support, but you damn sure get more alimony and a higher division of assets. So that's what I've used them for. Um, although you do make a good point. I never really thought about, you know, if somebody was trying to cry poor because they didn't want to pay child support, looking on their social media to see if they're mm -hmm. like in Cancun one week, you know, and Turks and Caicos the next week, you know. Um, that's really clever. But I, I don't really have a lot of cases where that's too much of an issue. Usually I do get, like, the non-custodial parent, and they're not able to pay. I mean, they really are not able to pay. Yeah. I've got a case like that right now. Dude was married, had four children. He works at Publix. And now the child support... Oh, that's what I wanted to politely disagree with you about in regards to the child support calculator. It used to be an Excel spreadsheet, and about two or three years ago, they made it to where we family law attorneys have to go on a website and use the website oh, that yeah. the state created yeah. 
And so you really have no way of saying, I mean, like this guy who works at Publix, right? He's been asking me forever, how much child support am I going to pay? And I have to give him the lawyer answer. It depends. You know, it depends on your income at the time. Is she going to get a job? You know, what's happening? And I can't say this is the formula like we might have right. could have said before. But you can massage it because, see, like he's paying ex-wife $400 a month because that's what he can afford. And if she tries to fight for the six, because I finally calculated like 688 or something, he would actually end up owing according to the, the state calculations. I'm going to look at her and go, do you want $400 a month regular, like he has been paying ever since he moved out, or do you want 688 only whenever he can pay it? And then you're going to have to go to child support enforcement and try to get, you know, all of that. Do you want to take his driver's license? Do you want to take his passport? Do you want to have him found in contempt and throw him in jail? Well, for some people, the answer is, well, yes. Um, but these are not those those people. So that's when the low income deviation comes in because four kids, I mean, come on. And he works and barely makes above minimum wage. I mean, seriously. So, yeah, it's now on the website exclusively. Believe me, I tried to submit a child support oh, worksheet yeah, with yeah. the Excel spreadsheet. They don't like that. It's technically still Excel, but it's not an Excel yeah, it spreadsheet. Has a, it has a friendlier yeah. user interface. Yeah. <laughs> a much friendly user interface. But yes, so that's all I have to say about it. That. Now, it bef I guess before you started practicing, before I started practicing, mm -hmm. it used to actually be a formula in Georgia, a percentage of your income. Well, uh, it's still a pro rate of share. Right. But what that means is that I make 100000 He makes 200000 He would pay every $2 for my $1. But if I pay the child's insurance, you know, daycare because of work, et cetera, then I get some credit, or maybe he pays for the special needs. He gets some credit. So, yeah, it's a whole bunch of mess that I don't want to try to calculate because, damn it, Jim, I'm a lawyer, not an accountant. So there you go. See, I knew that joke would go over here. Yes, it usually doesn't. I, like, teach in other places, and they're like, I'm like, oh, wrong audience. All right. Back to you, Scott. Um, it's so. Or back to you, Ron. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I didn't you know, know you had more to say. Right, there you go. I've got stuff. Um, so I have things. I have stuff and things. Um, <laughs> and, and you bring up some of the things that we that child support services does to enforce orders. You know, we can suspend license. We can suspend passports. Hunting and fishing license, which in some parts of the state are, you know, people's. That matters. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it really does matter to them. It's very important to them. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to get into the efficacy or, or the logic behind all of that, but, but what I will say is another thing that's sort of been a trend and in Georgia in particular is moving toward is accountability courts for child support. Yes. So it's essentially a system uh, where we look to see what sort of barriers a person has that's preventing them from paying child support. They're really um, awesome. They do good work. Uh, and, yeah. and, 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 and then that's something that's the, the, the federal government incentivized and in some states picked up on some didn't. Um, you know, we talked about Texas. We didn't, Scott, you mentioned Florida. One thing Florida does that oh. we don't do in Georgia uh, is retroactive child support. Uh, so you can get somebody that you've had a kid for 15 years and all of a sudden they decide they want to get child support order, um, say you were never married, and they can go back and get 15 years worth of child support that you may have been supporting their child, but do you have receipts? Yeah, receipts um, are a real bastard. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, and can you prove it? I mean, yeah. it's, it's what it always breaks down to is can you prove it? Um, another one of my favorites is New Jersey, which has no age of emancipation. What? Um, yeah, so you can pay child support uh, as long as the child is living in the home of the custodial parent uh, and is not supporting themselves. Uh, you can owe child support and uh, I don't in New know, Jersey. And I, I'm sorry, sorry, you And brought Akbar's shirt, by the way, really awesome. Um, and the thing that gets me, and I don't know of any state that does this, no state makes the custodial parent prove what the money is being spent on. I mean, how many times have you heard, oh, she's spending my money on, you know, hair salon and, uh, you know, pedicures and all this other stuff. It's very hard to prove that, especially if the money gets direct deposited into account. And while rent and power bill and internet bill and all this gets paid out of it, so does the salon and nails. So, I mean, if we had to force people to do that, we'd have to make it come in. Either everybody would have to have a debit card with the child support and then they could track Mm -hmm. You know, the expenditures, but what if you had a PIN number and you can pull it out cash? So it's it's an, oh, and men's rights. That was the thing I wanted to talk about. I'm surprised you didn't talk about it. Um, yes, I'm a feminist to the nth degree, but I, I also am a believer in fairness. Um, I'm going to address the men's right movement as far as child support and alimony is concerned, not about the rest of it. That's what you want me to talk about, right? 
Because, you know, I can talk about that other for, and this is not that class. Okay, good. <laughs> I got words about that. Anyway, so that is sort of a notion that started in the 80s whenever almost all alimony was permanent alimony. Um, and, yeah, a lot of guys, because it was, sorry for the gender binary, that is not me at all, but in this particular case it was. The person that was made to pay, the payor, um, were typically the men who had worked the entire, you know, marriage and then the women who had not. And, you know, um, now, of course, we're seeing the change in the gender roles, um, and that's fine, too. I mean, alimony can still be paid if you're a lesbian or a gay couple who's getting divorced, so no big whoop. Um, there was a disparity before I started practicing law. I started practicing in 2011. Um, a really strong disparity and it started kind of fading out a little bit phase it getting phased out in the 90s these days in my personal experience with my clients they don't care because of the pro rate of share you know a judge is not going to go you know you're a real <clears throat> a-hole i'm trying to be nice because this is your class scott i curse like a sailor normally um you're a real a-hole so you got to pay more child support now that might happen in alimony that might happen in division of assets so don't piss off the judge but in child support it's numbers i mean it's pretty irrefutable numbers and then you have the deviations now if you're an a-hole to the judge they may not grant your low income deviation because it's up to the judge's discretion whether or not it's in the best interest of the children so yeah i always tell my clients don't be that person nobody likes that person um, but by and large and also alimony in georgia permanent alimony is almost unheard of in 11 years of practice i have seen one case um dude and and dudette because we're man and woman man and wife uh married for i don't know god 40 50 years um he all of a sudden wakes up one day and says i'm polyamorous and she says, I'm not. <laughs> they've raised their kids. They've got property. They've got, I mean, you know, all over the place. He was a IT guy before it was cool. So, you know, he's got a hockey pot full of money, right? And, uh, yeah. And I looked at him. I said, are you sure it ain't cheaper to keep her? And, uh, yeah, really ugly, cr crass expression we have, but it's true. Um, and he said, I know it would be, but I got to be who I am. I'm like, all right, then. Let's be who you are. But you're going to be paying alimony because she never worked. She never worked a day. She was the homemaker and the mother, and, you know, she took care of the bills and him and the dry cleaning and all that, you know. And I said, well, you're going to be paying until one or both of you, well, until one of you are dead. And uh, he was like, well, okie dokie then. Got his divorce. She got permanent alimony and a couple of the houses and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and he was mad mad the whole time. That's when you're mad, but you're not supposed to be mad. You're mad mad. You know, you're like be having a tantrum. Um, he was mad mad for a while, and I'm like, these are your choices. And I've had so many clients who are either of any alternative lifestyle come to me and say, well, I should be able to do this. Well, yes, but you're going to pay the price for it because judges don't understand yet, at least some of them. Um, but most of the time I have found in Georgia that alimony is temporary. So say me and fiance get married, you know, he's in medical school, but he's graduating, he's a doctor and all this, and he wants me to quit to take care of him. I make my bar card inactive. I mean, I've been practicing, you know, at that point, we practiced 20 years. And I go inactive, and then we just decide, you know, one day we don't like each other permanently anymore. We, like, un unlike each other frequently often, but that's because we're both fiery individuals. Um, but we decide to call it quits. I am entitled to get enough money from him to get me back on my feet. And that's really up to the judge. You know, my lawyer can make an argument of, you know, it's going to take me at least a year to reactivate my bar card and then take enough continuing legal education credits to know what the hell is going on in the legal world, you know, what's changed in Georgia. Or I could say three years or whatever the case may be. And that's usually what happens. But the most common is lump sum alimony. How much to pay you off and make you go away. And that doesn't have to be money. It can be houses, it can be cars, it can be boats, it can be pretty jewelry, it can be whatever. Whatever is of value. Coin collection, I've seen it. Um, and that's the most common because the people receiving the alimony don't want to rely on the other person to pay it timely. Because if they don't, what's the recourse? There's no alimony support enforcement. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I'd love to see that agency. That'd be funny. Um, but there is contempt, right? So you go to court and contempt action. I haven't had payment, blah, blah, blah. And best case scenario, you get your money. Uh, or I guess worst case scenario, depending on if you want to be malicious, you get the money. But the judge can throw them in well, usually 20 days of jail for contempt if they don't pay. But most of the time, you purge the contempt by paying the arrears. 
So who the hell wants to pay a lawyer over and over and over again to go back and do that? And if you know that your ex is a crumb bum and you got an alimony settlement, take it in the lump sum. Take it now. Then you can take it, go buy a house or a camper or an apartment or, you know, a sugar baby. I don't know. Whatever it is you want to buy, go buy it. And that is what I always advise my clients. Take the lump sum because you never know. And what happens if they die? I mean, the 60-year-old couple, right? You know, she might get five years worth of alimony. She might get 15, you know, if he lives and does well. Or he might get hit by a bus tomorrow. Take the lump sum. And as far as that, uh, a gender disparity there, mm -mm. Um, the, the courts have been very, very fair about that. Um, the lady I told you I worked for when I first started practicing, she went to the Supreme Court of Georgia. If you've ever done a Thompson analysis, she was the one who argued that. Um, wife and husband, wife, wife has a house. They get married, so it's premarital asset. And, but he does a lot of improvements on it, and it increases the value. And then he sits around and does nothing for the next four or five years. Oh, and usually in order to get alimony, you got to be married, married, not shack up honeys, not together, not seeing each other, not hooking, 10 years, legally 10 years. So they were married like 15, I think. But those last half the years, he stopped doing maintenance on the house. It was in disrepair, et cetera. So when they got divorced, he wanted half of the equity in the house. She said, no, I want the half of the equity. I want all of the equity before we got married. And I want a larger percentage after we got married because although you did all of these improvements at first, you have not done anything. You have not made a mortgage payment. I've done all this. And you, oh God, Thompson analysis are wicked. You better know Excel. <laughs> um, you know, you go in and who paid every payment and who put in this much money. Sweat equity is absolutely a thing. So this was the man, male, identified person, trying to get money from the female identified person. So that's why when I read the description, I'm like, Oh, no, I got some stories for old Scott because, yeah, um, the ones that I've seen and the ones that my boss has seen, it's, it's, it can be equal. And I don't think there's the gender disparity anymore that it used to be. Yeah, and I think, too, generally with child support, there's – I don't think there is a gender disparity. I, I, I have seen just as frequently fathers who get custody of their children mm -hmm. and seek child support from the mothers – um, I, I think successfully. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I think yeah. it all depends more now, um, really, on the facts of who who actually wants to keep the children and who the children want to go with. Because I mean, the the children do deserve to have some sort of voice in it. I don't mean that they should be able to just alienate one of their parents, but. Uh, if a child is 14 years old, it, the age they can make an election in the state of Georgia, which parent they want to have primary custody, um, you know, they probably have reasons they like one parent more than the other. Um, and and it, if we have questions, y'all just come on down. I mean, I, I, are you good with that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Give us the international um, hailing signal. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I want to uh, piggyback on what he said real quick, if that's cool. I see your hand. I will not forget. Um, Yes, between 14 and 17, they can do an affidavit of election. But if it's still found to be not in their best interest, the judge will not honor mm -hmm. it. And like, oh, I want to go live with my uh, mom who's like a big partier and I can smoke pot there and blah, blah, you know, and all this other stuff. And the judge is going to go, yep. really? Um, from 11 to 13, they can state a preference, but it is not um, absolute. And before that, the judge will usually talk to the kids in camera if they think there's something significant. Um, God, there was something else that you said. Um, yeah, no, I've seen equally both um, male identified and female identified people get the kids. And the best interest of the child standard is what the judge follows no matter how old they are. And there's 13 different factors, none of which have to do with who the kids like, because sometimes the one that the kids don't like are the ones that are the best because they put down the boundaries, right? Um, and, but it's things like, kind of almost, almost with that, like, you know, who has spent the most time? Do you know your child's teacher's name? Yeah, that's a thing. Ask me how I know. We'll talk about that afterwards. Um, you know, do have they attended extracurriculars or PTA meetings or teacher meetings? Have they um, found, formed a bond? Um, have they paid child support before if it's like sort of a modification or a change of custody? You know, have they been in their lives supporting them? Have they been there, you know, for... Uh, like I said, extracurricular uh, religious activities, you know, if that's important, something to that effect. But there's 13 different factors and things you wouldn't even think about. Um, but, yeah, the, the ones that's closest to do they like the parent is the bonding, and that matters. 
that absolutely matters. So yeah, if a, a female identified person has raised the kids, even after the divorce, like say it's a modification, mm -hmm. and they want to have a custody and visitation mod modification where the male identified person gets the child, um, I mean, I'll take a page out of my book, which this would never happen, but my ex-husband, my child has lived with me when we were together, since we've been apart. It would be a really hard sell for him to get primary physical custody at this point. And a lot of people say, oh, it's because, you know, she's the woman. No, mm, ooh, almost slipped. No, mother fluffer. It's because, see, I've learned to do that in front of my kid. Um, no, it's because she's taking care of him and she's not the good time parent on the weekend. And, you know, she's there whenever discipline is needed and parent teacher conferences are needed and all of that. So they look at factors you wouldn't even think of. It's really, I wish I could think of the code. I might look it up next time we were talking about the, or I'll read them out, the best interest of the child standard and how many factors that can like play into it. You might be surprised. I was when I read it the first time. Yes, please. Oh, sorry, it was Your very turn. interesting. No, I almost forgot my question. You gotta be less interesting. Um, so the court obviously has uh, child support for some philosophical reason of equity or so, the court needs to be involved. And so uh, there's this philosophical reason the court's doing this. Now, how well do you think the formulas reflect and what would you think we should change or how would those form should those formulas be to meet that end as opposed to an Excel web sheet or a website? Because I, I mean- Well, the numbers in the web, in the backdoor Excel that is yeah. user friendly is based on almost a cent probably over a century of <clears throat> cases that have gone through the court mm -hmm. and things that have been seen by defects right. and um, other agencies as far as what is the best way to support the child in the most equitable not equal equitable way right because I you mean because there should be some you know I'm just trying to say is there some sort of way to abstract that thought because I, I see well, the way people calculate things and I'm like well how does this work out and why you know would they do that? You know what the biggest change has been? And mm -hmm. I forget how long ago, five or six, maybe it was longer because I'm old and I forget and ADHD. Anyway. Um, when they changed the laws, however many years ago it was, there was a possibility always to have zero child support if somebody was a crumb bum or, and, and, you know, wasn't working on purpose or whatever the case may be. But the philosophy, the, oh God, what is the word I'm looking for? The, the judicial, the, 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 the I'll think of it, I promise. Um, but the philosophy behind the law, the reason behind the law was that if one parent, if both parents see the child, I'm just going to use one child, one child, any amount of time, mm -hmm. that person is spending their money in order to support that child. And if one person has the child all, um, way more of the time than this one, they deserve more money because you can also get a deviation for time. And what I was trying to tell you is the reason why it's a pro rata share is because both parents, they created that child, even well, if it was well, a sure. one night stand, and both parents should be obligated to support. Well, I, don't, I don't have a position on this. No, no, just, you're, you asked the philosophy, but that's right, the philosophy. Except, yeah, I know yeah. I'm a litigator. I can be like, rah, rah, that yes, is not but directed you at you. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I know I do. Yeah, um, but, <laughs> um, true story, actually. Um, but, yes, um, I've only lost like four cases in 11 years. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, that's the public policy. That's the word I was looking for. That's because, the public we, policy behind it. Yeah, you because know, abstractly, you, I, I'm, I'm sure that's there for the outcome of the child, right? right. It's in the best interest of the child. Right, but yeah. there, there has to be some sort of calculation as to how how to best divide it amongst the, you know, you don't just go, well, you've got the money, we're going to take it. I don't know. You hope that's not it. No. There's so, something more than that, right? I, I don't know if you live in Georgia or not. It doesn't really matter Texas, if you do. Yeah. Um, interweb, beautiful thing. Look uh -huh. up Georgia Child Support Worksheet Calculator. Anybody can log in and make an account and play with it. Go in there and take a look at it and see all the deviations are yeah. stu and stuff. Now, I've heard a lot of complaining about it. I just didn't know. Uh, you, know <laughs> you wanted the Cliff Notes version, damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, at one point, I drifted into the manosphere on YouTube, you know. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're like, oh, well, I'm there's sorry. lots, so, so much complaining. I'm like, yeah, but the kid. I mean, look, look, it's know. supposed to be in the, the best interest of the, the child. The kid, and you were there. You didn't just trip mm -hmm. and fall into her, you know, and and so. And even if you did, you're still responsible. Yeah. Wear a freaking condom. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Oh, and on that tip, um, there's <laughs> get it, condom. Anyway, um, y'all can laugh. It's all right. Damn it, Friday night at Frolicon. Um, something that you had said about how you know sometimes it's hard to find the fathers because it was a one night stand or something like that. There is actually something in Georgia that I love called the putative father registry. Mm -hmm. um, I see we probably have a lawyer out here in the office because you keep nodding your head. I'm going to talk to you afterwards. Um, I don't know, I haven't talked to you yet. Okay, right on. <laughs> um, but the putative father registry, which is if you do have a one night stand with somebody and you want to know 
if that person ends up conceiving as a result you can go and put in as much information that you know about them get their name or at least what you think their name is um, and put your name in say that the you know the sex happened on this day and blah 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 and all this and if somebody has a child and they want to look the first thing especially if defects or child support enforcement is involved the first place they will look is the putative child mm -hmm. registry to see if they can find the father and you know you'd be surprised at what percentage of fathers actually want to be found it's not like it and maybe it wasn't even like how it used to be i don't know i wasn't alive then but i can tell you right now from working in the juvenile courts on the dependency side um that's where children are deprived and they become dependent on the state to be safe um so the non-criminal stuff um working on the dependency side i've seen a lot of fathers that were addicted to drugs or alcohol or whatever the case may be had criminal records but i have seen men in prison for like 15 years work their case plan while in prison get out and get custody of their children because the woman didn't do that and so that's another reason why i said i don't really see a gender disparity anymore because men have options to be made known if something like that even happens in a one night stand they slip and trip and fall you want to take a question well, well and, okay. and we, we can take the question but I, to, to sort of fall in line with that i mean and another thing we've done is we made it a lot easier for putative fathers to oh, to become legitimate As, oh uh, and yeah we've streamlined that process a lot but we got a question and uh, dna is required but it should be okay yeah. come on really yes. this is six bucks mm -hmm. uh, this is a little bit of a sensitive question um hopefully not too sensitive uh because of the way the law works in terms of child support it's kind of like statutory rape and it's almost absolute uh for male victims of rape mm -hmm. with a female offender mm -hmm. or for male minors who are mm -hmm. taken advantage of mm -hmm. um i have seen and i had to look it up to remind myself i believe there was a case in kansas where the court decided that a male minor had to pay child support because ultimately it was decided that the child was considered more important even though they also ruled that it was statutory rape at the same time a that's kansas b um <laughs> now you want to talk about reality or the way that sarah would have it the way sarah would have it is if sexual assault had been proven and was the person male female whatever gender notwithstanding they should have nothing to do with that child i don't want your money or maybe you do want their money i don't know leave it up the option of the person who has primary physical custody of the child to decide whether or not they want the money and the other one um the one that was the assailant they should have their per, uh term mm, per, real passionate about this sorry parental rights terminated period i mean come on really i, I mm, yeah i have i got a lot of experience with that too personal and others so yeah mm -hmm. um kansas is up fluffed up I mean, you know, let's face facts. Um, you've seen some of the laws that's come out of their program in the last three years, especially since Roe versus Wade got all fluffered up. Um, yeah, I just think that's wrong. I mean, I'm, male right, female right, whoever, the victim should not be made to suffer as a result of what the assailant did. And I think if a male is the victim and a baby results as that, they should get primary physical custody if they choose or adopt or have the um, option to adopt just like the female would if the female was the victim i mean that's me but well and i think too under, i'm a feminist but i'm also a humanist because that's some hmm. i think under georgia law too you could essentially inverse terminate your parental rights to that child if that's what you wanted to do as the victim can um, you yes i I, 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 I think you uh, could do a declaratory judgment and, uh, and, and okay. accomplish that what we're over here having lawyers speak about is um usually in consensual sex, you can't just terminate your parental rights and walk away. You're still re responsible for child support because the state of Georgia says it takes two parents. Which is bull, anyway, it, it's bull fluff. Um, it takes two parents to raise a child. So say uh, my ex-husband terminated for whatever reason, which he never would, and say fiance wanted to adopt. They would only accept the termination if there was somebody there to adopt. But ex-husband dies. It's my option as to whether or not I let somebody else legally adopt my child um and not until he becomes an adult and that's his choice which you can do adult adoptions um which is kind of awesome but anyway um and they're so easy to do and they really are they <laughs> seriously are. i mean name change i mean you know so what this good gentleman here is saying that apparently there's been cases where declaratory judgments meaning the 
the judge just says this is what's right and this is what we're going to do um they've been able to you said inversely yeah it's just an inverse of your it's it's self-termination of your parental rights but i mean it, it's really the inverse because you're terminating your parental rights and they rights, still wouldn't expect a second person to step in like they do no mm -hmm. All right. And, and that situation, too, that child was also a ward of the state. So, I mean, oh, that, that probably it, made it a little well, bit easier. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. So, just to, to make sure my understanding is clear here, um, so it seems like there are some, it seems like a judge can make a legal determination to protect the victim in this case? Yes. Okay. Uh, I At was, least I was, in Georgia. I wasn't I'm, sure I there because uh, obviously statutory rape as like a federal offense, oh, yeah. there's no way. Regardless of any kind of circumstance, there's no way to talk your way out of that, right? So, um, one of my specialties is working with the National Coalition of Sexual Freedom about with their Consent Counts Initiative. Um, we have now codified, and I say we because like everybody in CSF worked on it, um, a definition of consent in the Model Penal Code, because 28 states do not have um, not just. Uh, definitions of sexual assault aggravated sexual assault we have that here but not a lot of states have that and you can't consent in a lot of cases to a lot of things that's done rape is the only criminal act here that can be consented to but then you have to prove it but there's nothing codifying consent it is now in the model penal code we're trying to get it passed in different states and different means um but yeah i mean that would be a hard hill to climb because first you're going to get you know judges that are like well what do you mean he didn't consent i mean he's a man of course he can or a boy of course he consented right unless it was like a hot for teacher thing and you know that's a power disparity but a lot of people don't understand what that means you know that, that this person had power over the other person because i mean rape is not an act of of sex it's an act of violence and power um so um I mean, I'd take that case if I wasn't working for Douglas County. Um, I'd take the hell out of that case. But, yeah, um, if those laws are not there, they should be. That'll be my next crusade. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, I, I think <laughs> yep. the biggest problem. I'm on problem, fire about it now. So <laughs> I think the biggest problem with, with the hypothetical is that a lot of times I don't know that that gets reported. And I don't know that it gets prosecuted because I don't know that it gets reported mm -hmm. until it's sort of too late. Um, well, and, there's statute of limitations, but yeah, still, um, a lot of evidence can be spoiled and non-existent anymore right. and all that. And so I think that's really more of the problem because, I mean, if you've got a conviction for statutory rape and then there's a child born of that rape, it's not that hard for a judge to see what, what's in the best interest. Yeah, what's in yeah. the best interest in that situation. The criminal versus the not criminal. Yeah. So there you go. Are we done, Pete Shirt person? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I got y'all very. Because Bucky's here is like real eager to get to the microphone, so yeah. <laughs> no, no, not really. My question's easily Googleable, but here we are, so. So is the 13 um, uh, child. Oh, God, it's 20 now. Well, look at that. Um, uh, best interest of the child standard, but go ahead anyway. Cool. So my question's just more about alimony. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that um, in the state of Georgia, if you've been married for less than 10 years, uh, the spouse is not entitled to alimony is that like a standard usually, usually and not permanent not permanent alimony but like the temporary alimony situation i was talking about if i gave up my bar card you know something like that um that could happen if you're married if you're married for a year don't even think about it if you're married for excuse me you know five six seven maybe eight and there's a significant there's like bright line facts this woman was an attorney and was making this amount of money, could support herself, her child, no problem. He told her to quit, evidenced by she quit and made her bar card inactive. Now she's willing to go back to work. She just needs a little bit of help between now and then. I'd say, from what I've seen, at least five in that particular case. But it would have to be something like that. It wouldn't, you know, if it was like, well, you know, we were married for three years and one spouse you know, worked a little bit, although they used to work a whole bunch because the other person had money. You know, that's a little more, they ain't going to want to mess with that. They may look at them and go, get your alimony through, you know, division of assets or lump sum. Um, but yeah, the 10 year rule is usually for permanent alimony or something a little more long term. Gotcha. So something a little bit more like short term being about one to five years. Um, it's a little harder to prove one to five, I would say, in my experience with the cases that I've had. And you might Georgia. find other case law somewhere else that says something otherwise. 
And I think if you really drilled down and tried to figure out where that 10-year mark came from, you know, because it's an arbitrary number. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that, yeah, there's no law. There's no statute. Yeah, that, it's that's just case the, law. That's the point in time, though, where you vest, a, a spouse vest in, like, the federal retirement system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's probably where that number, you know, 10 comes from is they looked at something like yeah, that. Yeah, get a divorce before 10 years or your spouse can get a part of your Social Security and vice versa. There you go. Thanks. I can teach you how to be bitter all over the place. Go buy me a drink at the bar afterwards. <laughs> we have a drink between me now and my next class, Scott. Just thought I'd let you know. Just so you'll know, if you want to look up the best interest of the child standard, it's um, UCG... United Code of Georgia Annotated. Yes, you see no OCGA. OCGA. God, ACTA. Bless. It's I'm Klingon. so tired. Yeah, right. Um, you're looking at Title 15, Chapter 11, Article 1. So 151126. So the section you or you can just Google what I did, which is Best Interest of the Child Standard Georgia. Um, go to just Justia G U S T I A. That's my favorite website for free statutes. But it's 151126, and there are 20 of them. Um, some of them you might expect, like the love, attention, affection, bonding, like what we talked about. Such child's sense of attachments, the home environment, of course, mental and physical health of all individuals involved, meaning not just the other parent, but the parents, boyfriends, girlfriends, um, other stepkids that are around. Um, the least disruptive placement alternative, my child is autistic, as is his mother. And um, if something were to happen and, you know, my son had to go live with his father, and he loves his dad, but he's never lived with him on a full-time basis, that would be disruptive. Um, of course, family violence, substance abuse, etc. The preferences of the persons available to care for such child. Um, and then, my favorite, any recommendation by a tor- court-appointed custody evaluator or guardian ad litem. That's okay, but this is my favorite. Any other factors considered by the court to be relevant and proper to its determination? So, yeah, that, that's where you can either get bit in the butt or raised on high depending on what those particular factors are in other words all these things and it's still up to the judge's discretion so yes please unless you had something to say i'm sorry i'm so used to talking about myself project oh the tv yeah. how's this there you yes. go the dulcet tone of your voices are coming through perfect at the beginning you mentioned um an opposing counsel or opposing party mm-hmm. getting caught for fanning out money in a social media post yes. after claiming no income. How has the rise of instantaneous social media changed how you as attorneys counsel your clients what to do and what not to do? And maybe you could share some of the w- weirder stories that you've come across, either your client You're that right. made you slam your head on your desk or an opposing party doing that made you think what an easy case it was going to be. I got two. How many you got? Yeah, I don't know how many. I've, I beg clients not to get on social media. Or get off of it. It, it doesn't matter if it's a car wreck Absolutely. case or one oh, of yeah. my consumer oh, car protection are the case. best. Because yeah. you're like, oh, I'm all this injured. And then they're like, you know, dancing the jig at somebody's wedding on their Instagram. And it's like, mm, okay. Uh, well, and then you, I do a lot of consumer protection too under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And, and a lot of times when we settle cases, there's non-disparagement, non-disclosure agreements that mm-hmm. uh, clients sometimes agree to sign. Sometimes I commit some not to it just sort of depends uh, and I, I have seen I mean I, I've negotiated purchases of businesses and things like that and they immediately go and do something on social media that they agreed not to do and you're oh. just like why am I dealing with this at a child's birthday party uh, <laughs> my phone blowing up on a Saturday afternoon mm-hmm. about this this is things we talked about yesterday um, literally yeah. yesterday yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even 24 hours. That is correct. That is correct. I have two. Um, one was a custody modification case, and one is uh, do, 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 do. no. Both were custody modification cases. Um, my very first trial, true story. Whenever I became, whenever I was a baby lawyer, um, whenever I went out on my own, I worked for two lawyers before I started my own law firm, um, and this was in White County, Georgia, and it was about what you would expect up there in White County, Georgia. And we were there for a hearing on whether or not discovery should be reopened. And it got nothing to do with the facts of the case, nothing. And my client was trying to regain custody from her ex's grandparents who had guardianship. She wanted to take custody back. She'd clean up her life. You know, everything was groovy. Bob Coleman, never forget, 
as long as I live. I've forgotten a lot of stuff in my life, y'all. Opposing counsel, apparently he was the big wig attorney up there in White County in the area, and he thought he was going to intimidate me. That was very unfortunate for him. I am unflappable most of the time. Well, Bob brings in five-inch binders, puts them all across the table. And we're still, again, trying to figure out whether or not we should reopen Discovery because her former attorney got sick. There was like a lot of time that had passed. I mean, it was bad. Well, um, I'm standing here saying these are the facts. This is the statute. We should reopen Discovery, you know, or we should allow, you know, depositions, whatever. And Bob, fluffing Bob, um, was like, well, you know, uh, we really need Discovery, or we don't need Discovery to be open. We have all the evidence we need. And what was in these binders was everything that they had printed off from a little website you might or might not be familiar with, FetLife. It's the Facebook for Alternative Lifestyles. And um, my client, was it subcultures of subcultures of subcultures you dig where we're tracking okay good and uh he kept naming off all of it and all this and this um mid-40s white male judge I, I actually had the force on my side that day was sitting here kind of looking at him like he's like what <laughs> and i said your honor i said he's trying to try the facts of the case whenever we're at a motions hearing and i would very much appreciate it if you were to you know dismiss all of this and grant me my motion and he said Bob what does this have to do with anything <laughs> and uh, and he looked at me and he said are you sure about this Miss Steele and I said would you want anyone in your bedroom and liquor cabinet your honor no Bob put it away and if you mention it again until it's time for the trial I will throw all of it out and my whole point of that was that I had told my client get off fat life <laughs> but she did and then you know they're based out of Canada and they are real scared of US subpoenas so the guardian ad litem in the case went with a subpoena, and FetLife went bloop. So just because you take it down doesn't mean it's gone. If you put anything on the interwebs, it is never gone. I don't care what they say. You got to believe me when I say this. That was the first case. Second case, told my clients to get off the social media and that particular site again, and well, they didn't. So there was current statuses of how they had gone to adult events doing adult things right and the opposing counsel standing up there this is child custody case um blah 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 you know they're doing this and they're doing that now this judge um white male um probably as old as dirt i'm thinking him and methuselah were brothers right <laughs> and he's sitting here pulling off his glasses like squinty eyes you know and he's like what Miss Steele, do you have any idea what they're talking about? I said, more than you can imagine, Your Honor. And uh, he was like, well, what are they talking about? See, I'm cleaning it up for your class. See that? Um, and I said, he's seen my other classes. And he's like, what are they talking about? Um, well, Your Honor, have you ever seen the movie Fifty Shades of Grey? Well, yeah, my daughters went and took me to it. Okay, we're going to put a pin in that over here. And we're going to leave that right there, Daddy. Um, and I said, uh, <laughs> And I said, really? Well, then you understand that they were doing what Christian and Anastasia were doing. And he was like, oh, well, that, did the kids ever see it? No, Your Honor. You know, did they keep everything locked up in a trunk that was locked in a closet that was locked in their bedroom that was locked? Um, they had followed my advice. And, um, yeah, so in that particular, and he told opposing counsel, don't ever bring that up again. That's because I was the one arguing it. I literally did this for a living for 10 years. But... Yes, I'm sure we have both told clients, get, get off, if you can, the Internet. Because whenever we do discovery, we can say, produce your Facebook, FetLife, Instagram, whatever, username and password. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> that there was a gas for those of you who are looking at the video. And you could probably have heard that. <laughs> yes, uh, person in the white shirt. Yes, and I've used that before. So even if, you know, you stop posting then you can go in, unlock it, and see all that was in the past. Like, stuff was going on during the marriage. Oh, the, the spouse checked in at this particular restaurant when the other spouse was at home with the kids. Who is it that they tagged in it? Or who commented, oh, I had such a nice time, sweetie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, nothing is erasable. And pretty much nothing is subpoenaable, especially if it's um, exculpatory. Not subpoenable. Not subpoenable. Yeah, excuse me. Um, especially if it's important, exculpatory, or um, life altering um so yeah it's really hard to look at anybody these days though and go don't get on social media i mean who isn't i mean seriously who isn't in one way form or fashion um people probably saw my space out there i don't know but yeah um what i try to tell my clients is continue to post 
but post innocent things. You know, you want to act like your parent of the month, make sure you post plenty of posts with your children, especially if that, now, if you go from never mentioning your children to boom, you know, that's going to look conspicuous. Just kind of ramp it up a little, you know, if that's what you choose to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, you can't really say get, you know, don't get on social media. Now I will say don't get on social media and talk disparagingly about the other parent because that's called alienation of parental affection and you can get in, get a citation of contempt for that or worse. Um, like not get custody of your kids. And so just try not to put anything out there that's evidence. You know, just kind of keep it to news and weather and, you know, pictures of your food. I don't know, that's the most harmless stuff I would imagine. Got anything else for the green person? I don't think she had a question. Yes, yes, green person is quiet. I didn't know if you yeah, had anything no, no, to say. No, no, okay, I, there I we go. Have we'll get it together, y'all. we yeah. got another panel in a couple of hours, so be all right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I was a preschool teacher for a while, and I got Dang called up. more than once to, sorry, should I start from the beginning? You didn't know. You're a preschool teacher, and you got called in. Yeah, a couple of times parents would ask me to write something up for a custody thing that oh, yeah. was going to come up, and once I was asked to show up, ultimately... Dad showed up and saw a whole line of people sitting, waiting to talk, and he settled right there on the spot. But um, I've never, like, is that common? Like, not, as far as I know, none of my stuff was ever actually used. It was like one parent threatening the other parent, but none of the other preschool teachers I've even spoken with. I mean, theoretically, it could be used. Said that, that I've never a, done that. I've thing. never dug that deep because then that makes everything uncomfortable for, you know, I tell people all the time, if you have a kid with somebody, you're in each other's lives until one of the three of you are dead. And so after that hearing, that those parents had to go parent that child with this preschool teacher who's now sitting here looking at them like, really, Mother Fluffers? Really? I mean, seriously. I mean, I would if I was in your position. So, I mean, that would be like a last, last resort I would do. But I'm sure working the defect side or the SAG side, um, special appointed attorney general. Um, okay. He's the lawyer for defects. Um, child support services. Oh, you're oh, in child support services. Yeah. Oh, no, I was I do not say, do Department of Family Children yeah. Services. But I'm sure maybe in your practice you've seen where that was necessary. Maybe. You I know, don't know. The instances where I've seen yeah. that actually happen I'm is when I've it. been a guardian ad litem for kids. And, and I've gone and talked to mm -hmm. teachers before in schools. But that's part um, of your job, though. Right. Because yeah, I've done um, that, too. Yeah. I, I've seen them get subpoenaed to court before. I don't know that it's very helpful. Uh, particularly if they're trying it in front of a judge. Yeah. Uh, maybe in front of a jury, uh, but in front of a judge, I, I just don't think there's a lot helpful to that. Um, now, if somebody's just being completely unreasonable and you got to prove your case, then maybe. But, and being um, that guy. You know, that happens. Or if a specific acute incident occurred and the preschool teacher was a witness who just happened to be the preschool teacher. Right. You know, like if somebody came in and strong-armed the other parent or the child or whatever, and you were the only person that saw it, yeah, you you mother fluffing right, I'm going to call you um, in a New York minute. But, like, just on general principle or, oh, tell me about the behavior of the child or what their attitudes are towards the parents. I mean, first of all, that's hearsay. And if you're not a, an expert witness, and I don't think you would be in opinions of – you know, a lot of times they say, you know, how do you think the child feels about? Well, that's not necessarily hearsay, but that's, are you a certified professional, you know, capable of saying that? I'm not saying a teacher isn't a professional. You absolutely are. But you might want to bring in the, psych the child psychologist for that. Right. I mean, that's the better witness for that. And we do have a, a best evidence rule that we have to follow. We don't always. <laughs> for we frequently don't. Well, other people frequently don't. But, yes, it is 8 o'clock, y'all, and y'all have got somewhere else to go. I have a question. But I can also just come talk to you. Okay. okay. Um... Okay, so I'm not a lawyer. I'm a law student. Ah, there we go. Where <laughs> there it go? is. There it is. Where you go? Uh, Georgia State. Cool. Okay. Yeah. But I spent the summer at Atlanta Legal Aid um, in oh, the oh, oh. domestic relations unit. I volunteer for them. Yeah. yeah. No, it was great. I loved it so oh. much. But I think there's Gosh, such a pervasive... <laughs> <laughs> there's such a pervasive attitude of like, uh, you know, child support is unfair. Alimony is unfair. Like, I can't believe they put me on the government system and like all this stuff and don't trust the government. <laughs> right? Wait, is the video still going, Scott? Can I be me now? I mean, it's after eight. I wasn't sure. No, I'm kidding. Mostly. But Come talk to me. I mean, <laughs> you all have spent so much time sort of pushing how this is so equitable, like this is yeah. it's best interest of the child standard, like all this stuff, but that's just not how it comes across, I think, in 
media or like in Ooh. or to the people yeah to i am people. trying not to so, make anyone angry before what i want to say about this what would you anyway. do well, what? i'll take it i mean I'm, yeah you go yeah. Ahead. um and, and i'll tell you this nobody in this room is super giddy on april 15th about going and paying their taxes yeah. it doesn't matter if you're you know if you're getting a refund or if you're paying in nobody really is super excited about paying your taxes child support is no different like, you might not be super excited to pay your child support unless you're at the end and you, you see, you know, oh, my obligation is I'm free. Uh, you you oh, might yeah. have some excitement. I know there's some people that have had that idea before, but, yeah. I mean, it's ultimately something for the benefit of your child. Um, it, it, and, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like paying taxes, though. It, it's money that's coming out of your pocket. It's, mm-hmm. it's not a fun, joyous experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and particularly when you're being compelled to do it. Uh, so I, I don't know that there's a PR way to fix that. Um, but at the same time, I, I think people just need to appreciate that if they have helped create a child, they need to take responsibility for some portion of that. And, and it, he's right. And I found in my experience that it is present company excluded, of course. We're going to do that, right? It is the males who thought that they could hit it and quit it. Yeah. And would have no responsibility and how am i ever going to be found how am i you know she doesn't know me blah blah or whatever um on the other side of that i've seen women who go i'm going to do this on purpose um so that i can collect child support so ain't nobody like you know free of being evil so let's just say that but then i think you should have the ability to go if you do not have to pay child support and you agree not to bother me and our and, and this biological human you made then you need to go the whole it takes two parents thing I, that's just r- ridiculous to me that is so misogynistic and antiquated it's not even funny i've done perfectly fine since my divorce supporting my child i don't need the child support um but my own ex-husband has looked at me early on we're much better now for those of you because some of y'all look familiar in here we're much better now but in the early on and you see it in early stages of divorce um well i'm not going to pay your child support that's due on you know every other friday until monday because i don't want you to go out and party with my money Mm -hmm. you know i'm a lawyer and i can buy and sell you right (laughs) okay i don't need your money Um, but it's those kind of attitudes it's almost like you know they want to have the fun of being the doting dad and the husband and blah 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 and all this and oh look at me especially narcissist i can tell you some stories from my own life um blah 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 blah. but then when they divorce they think of it like it's somehow inequitable that they have to pay child support but they only see their child you know i mean my ex husband sees child every weekend um but like they don't get the glory of being there all the time so they don't think they should have to pay and i mean it's just it's just ridiculous because if georgia is going to keep insisting that it takes two parents to parent a child then both are going to have to pay that's what it comes down to it that's the public policy behind it so thank you for coming we appreciate y'all